Graphene was widely hailed as the best new wonder material not too long ago. An atom-thick strip of carbon chicken wire capable of forming tubings, balls, and other bizarre forms. This is because graphene conducts electricity and scientists have raised the possibility of a new age of computer processing and a profitable graphene chip business. To get the graphene sector off the ground, the European Union committed 1 billion euros in 2020. Unique features of graphene have drawn attention to its existence. Examples include being tougher than diamond, yet more elastic than rubber, more resistant to corrosion, and a fraction of the weight of an ounce. But what if we suggest that there is a substance that is much stronger and has the power to displace graphene from the spotlight? This substance is referred to as borofin. In this video, let's take a look at a new material called borofin that could potentially replace graphene. But first, we're giving away $100 to one of our lucky subscribers. All you have to do is watch the entire video, leave a comment with your greatest takeaway, like, share, and subscribe. So without further ado, let's hop in. Due to the wide range of potential applications, two-dimensional structures are becoming increasingly popular in materials research. Among them is graphene, a two-dimensional carbon allotrope that is very strong and flexible and has excellent thermal conductivity. One atom thick, hexagonal, and semi-metallic, which looks like a honeycomb. In 2004, Gilem and Novoslov discovered it, which was awarded the 2010 Nobel Prize in Physics. However, there are a lot more exciting materials out there, like graphene. Borofin is only one atom thick, but unlike graphene, borofin is comprised of boron rather than carbon. Researchers have recently determined that it is even more durable and flexible than graphene, which was initially created in 2015. Hydrogen storage and high-performance lithium-ion batteries are only two of the applications of research published on ARCIV in March 2019 that catalog the possible uses of the material. In an electric vehicle-dominated future, these applications might be crucial. It can also be employed in flexible electronics due to its greater flexibility than graphene. Researchers believe that the borofin superconducting properties might be exploited to construct wearables, biomolecular sensors, and possibly quantum computers in the future. Now let's compare these two materials, and let's start with graphene. Since it has the potential to be used in a wide range of electronic applications, graphene has piqued the curiosity of leading research labs all over the world. Screens, printable graphene for paper electronics, and automobile batteries are just a few of the applications of graphene. Fast and resilient electronics can be built with this because it permits electrons to travel at high rates. However, graphene is not without its drawbacks as well. To begin with, graphene flakes as small as 1 micron in diameter cost more than $1,000 each, making them one of the costliest materials on the planet. Thanks to current research, a breakthrough in the quest for more and cheaper graphene is on the horizon. Furthermore, graphene-treated silver nanoconductors are most cost-effective in the fabrication of nanoconductor-based displays, if this procedure can be implemented. As a result, flexible touch panels, now made using indium tin oxide, may be phased out in the future. Graphene's mechanical hardness renders it unsuitable for devices requiring considerable tolerances to compression, stress, or torsion. The band gap prevents it from switching on and off with a simple switch. It also can't be employed as a catalyst in an oxidizing medium because of its oxidation sensitivity. Additionally, the cell membrane may be damaged by sharp edges that might impede its operation ability. Now, let's move on to borofin. Molybdenum disulfide, silicon, and germanium are also two-dimensional materials and hexagonal boron nitride and carbon nitride graphite. One of the most recent discoveries is borofin. Boron is the fundamental component of borofin, much like carbon is the essential component of graphene. Carbon and boron have several tiny atomic groups comparable at the nanoscale, yet their macroscopic allotropes are vastly different. Therefore, the presence of 2D boron as graphene was theoretically anticipated before its discovery. 
When elemental boron is put onto the silver surface, in a very high vacuum, a molecular beam epitaxial growth occurs, creating the material. In the earliest published reports, metallic 2D sheets with a distinctive buckled or crinkled surface are stated to have been made and weakly adhered to a silver substrate. Since then, three distinct types of 2D boron films on silver substrates have been successfully produced. Even if the central atom of boron is non-metallic semiconductor, this is still a nano-sheet, as expected theoretically. Because it is structurally stronger than graphene, while still having a low mass density, the new foil is both solid and flexible, making it a very desirable material. It also has a high electronic conductivity. Its flexibility and strength are believed to be at a record high level, and it may theoretically outperform the most commonly used polymeric materials on the market. In addition, the hardness to weight ratio is excellent. A particular phase transition in the structure of borofin makes the material considerably more resistant to cracking under stress. As it grows on a silver substrate, researchers studying flexible electronics such as flexible electrodes and nano-electronic connections notice the surface distinctive wave pattern. Its high tensile strength and low weight make it a viable reinforcing material for composites. In the field of the 2D nano-electronic materials, this is the first and only instance of its sort. The fact that it is so reactive is not always a bad thing. It makes borofin amenable to various chemical modifications and may even be compressed between layers and other materials to get precisely the desired qualities. Boron's hardness may also suggest that borofin promises to be a more robust material than silicon and germanium, which shatter readily. However, as is common with other crystal materials, borofin's thermal conductivity tends to fall when the temperature rises. Thus, at ambient temperature, the thermal conductivity of the latter is approximately 14.34 watts per meter. However, the power density of graphene and suspension is substantially higher, with a current density of 3,500 watts per meter. This shows how well it works for thermal control in various settings. Grain boundaries and kinds and placements of micro-inclusions can also be used to alter the thermal conductivity of metals. It's hardly surprising, therefore, that this fantastic material has the potential to be used in a broader range of solar devices than just electronics, unleashing the potential of two-dimensional boron-based semiconductors. In a Journal of Applied Nanomaterials paper released in October 2021, researchers described the superconducting characteristics of a newly synthesized borofin species. The research was conducted by a team from Shandong University in Qingdao, China, specializing in boron surfaces, 2D borofin nanomaterials, and novel metal applications, including lithium-ion batteries and anode materials. In a groundbreaking achievement, the first hydrogenated borofin has been made, allowing researchers to explore 2D boron-based semiconductors, field effect transistors scaled down to the nanometer range. Hydrogenated borofin was shown to be appropriate for usage in nanoscale field effective transistors or FETs in the most recent study. FETs control the flow of current in a semiconductor device by generating an electric field. Source, gate, and drain are all possible configurations. The FET effectively isolates control from the flow because of its high resistance from intake to an output of at least 100 mega ohm. Bipolar conjunction transistors, commonly known as BJTS, emit more noise, but they have no bias at zero leakage current. In general, FETs have better thermal stability than BJTS. Because of their lower heat dissipation needs, FETs are well suited for ultra-low power stitching. Deformation engineering of the B8H4 monolayer, which is critical to manufacturing 2D and nanoscale semiconductors, has been studied in depth in the current network. Additionally, the team proved the ballistic conductivity of hydrogenated borofin-based FETs. Particles in a superconducting material are constantly connected through ballistic connectivity, the movement of energy across long distances. For this purpose, boron-based FET semiconductors have demonstrated promising electrical performance, but scientists still have some work to do before borofin is extensively utilized.
they haven't figured out a means to produce significant amounts of borovin, for starters. So it is vital to safeguard the material against oxidation because of its reactivity. Borovin is costly to produce and difficult to handle because of these two qualities. So there's a lot of work to be done. They are confident in their work though, since borofin has the potential to be the next big thing in wonder materials. What about you? Do you think borofin is the next big thing for batteries and EV innovation? Drop your thoughts below. As always, thank you for watching up till the end of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Have a good one and see you next time!